powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for a record-breaking primary election night 2020. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Reesinger. Quite a night across Montana where Montana voters made history to make sure their voices are heard. Montana voters turned out in record numbers for the state's first all-male primary election. Now for the results and reaction. And we start with what was expected to be one of the most closely contested battles, the two-way Democratic race for Montana's open governor's seat between Mike Cooney and Whitney Williams, and it has now been decided. About 10 minutes ago, Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney was declared the winner by the Associated Press. Cooney out in front by about 10,000 votes. On the Republican side, Greg Gianforte declared the winner within an hour of polls closing. He'll get another chance at this seat. He lost to Steve Bullock in 2016 when he faces Mike Cooney in November. And there's the numbers there from the Republican side. It's Gianforte with 54% of the vote compared to Fox at 28%. Then Olszewski, we talked to Tim Fox, who came in a distant second just a short time ago. Well, just thank you. We appreciate uh, your confidence. Uh, we've worked very hard, not just uh, in this campaign, but certainly in our lives to, to be ready for this day. and. And, um, you know, we were not able to get around so much in the last three months, but we made good use of the time uh, that we had uh, prior to that. Now on to the U.S. Senate races, the Associated Press making the call within an hour of polls closing. In November, Senator Steve Daines and Governor Steve Bullock will face off on November 3rd. Bullock beating out two Navy veterans on the Democratic side. And there you see the numbers there. Bullock getting 96 percent of the votes so far. Of course, uh, these aren't final yet, but you can see he's well on his way to winning. He uh, sent us this statement after his easy win tonight. He says, Thank you, Montana, for making me your Democratic nominee for U.S. Senate. During my time in office, I have worked to represent the interests of everyday Montanans and put politics aside to do what's right. As governor, I brought Republicans and Democrats together to expand health care to 90,000 Montanans, kick dark money out of state elections, make significant investments in our schools, cut taxes for small businesses in the state, balance our state budget, and create Montana's first ever rainy day fund. And on the Republican ticket incumbent, Steve Daines will claim an easy win with a lead of more than 100,000 votes. You can see they're 88 percent. Wow. We were able to catch up with Senator Daines earlier tonight over Zoom. He told MTN there will be a stark contrast for voters come November. I think the key issues in November will be jobs, the economy, pocketbook issues for Montanans about helping our small businesses, getting Montanans back to work. It's about less regulations. It'll be about more freedom. The issue of the Second Amendment. Uh, I got a, an A-plus rating from the NRA. Uh, my opponent uh, had called for a semi-automatic uh, firearms ban. I'm an avid supporter of our public lands. I spend a lot of time outside on our public lands. Uh, immigration and border security, I think, will also be an important issue. Uh, I've stood strong with the president in securing our southern border. Uh, my opponent supported sanctuary cities. I think these are going to be very stark contrasts. Now the Danes and Bullock race will put the national political spotlight back on Montana. Dane says he expects President Trump to make at least one trip to the state to campaign for him. And two Green Party candidates also facing off tonight. Wendy Fredrickson of Helena and Dennis Danicky, a retired professor from Lolo, Montana. All right, now to the Democratic race for the U.S. House between Kathleen Williams and Tom Winter. And Kathleen Williams was declared the winner in this uh, about an hour ago, around 9 o'clock, by the Associated Press with about 41% of the votes tallied so far. You can see Williams with 90% compared to Winter's 10%. It's a seat that many Democratic observers feel has a chance at turning blue this fall. I just want to thank uh, all the Montanans that came out to support and that have worked um, tirelessly on this campaign and the last one. It's, uh, it's an honor to um, have that level of support and to know that Montanans really want to return true uh, independent representation to Montana's lone U.S. House seat. So it's an incredible honor. All right, so Kathleen Williams is in. How about the Republicans? And a crowded Republican field tonight. Six candidates vying for that November ticket. Right now, State Auditor Matt Rosendale with a pretty solid lead over Secretary of State Corey Stapleton of more than 10,000 votes. 
And another crowded Republican primary field for the Secretary of State. Six candidates looking to make it to November. At this hour, Christy Jacobson leading Scott Sales and Brad Johnson, all within 10,000 votes. The winner will face off against Democrat Bryce Bennett in November. All right, now we want to look at the races for the open attorney general seat. This is, of course, uh, for Tim Fox's seat. And we'll start with the Democratic primary between Kimberly Dudick and Rafe Graybill. Again, this is with 41% of the uh, ballots counted so far, or precincts in. And uh, Graybill opening up a commanding lead here. He's got 58% of the vote compared to Dudick's 42%. Now, on the Republican side, it is a battle between current Deputy Attorney General John Benyon and current Roosevelt County Attorney Austin Knutson. And Knutson is now way out in front of this, 59% to 41%. On to the race for state auditor, Democrat Shane Morijo from Missoula, with a heavy lead over Mike Windsor of Helena, 61% to 39%. And tonight, Republican Troy Downing with a lead of more than 20,000 votes over Scott Tuxbury. Well, Montana really didn't get a chance to weigh in on the presidential race. That was already pretty much already decided with Donald Trump going against presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden. Well, tonight, President Trump so far receives 93% of the votes from Montana, more than 130,000 votes for Trump. Joe Biden has the Democratic nomination locked up. Yeah, you can see uh, Biden with um, about 76%, I believe, of the vote. Uh, Sanders and Warren were still on the uh, ballot, but they uh, since, of course, uh, dropped out. So you can see Sanders finished second and, and Warren third. The District 2 Public Service Commissioner is a three-way battle between Tony O'Donnell, the incumbent from Billings, Daniel Zolnikoff, a state legis legislator from Billings, and Kirk Bushman, a former PSC commissioner. And this is a close race right now. You can see it's O'Donnell with a narrow lead over Bushman and then Zolnikoff in third. And the race for Supreme Court Justice 5, incumbent Lori McKinnon with a solid lead of more than 55,000 votes. So it looks like McKinnon will face off with Helena attorney Mike Black, who's coming in second in November. All right, we're going to get back to more election results in just a little bit. But first, we want to toss it over to Bob for a look at some rising waters across Montana. Bob? Yeah, that's right. And I tell you what, one picture's worth a thousand words. Take a look at this picture here. This is by Colson Park. You can see Sacrifice Cliff in the background, but look at the water there by the fence line. So yeah, it's already starting to flood there. And look at this. This is from uh, Lori Balk Balker. Uh, this is by Shepard. This is at the, uh, I believe, the Arrow Island. And boy, she says she's got about three feet of water around her home. and It is just a mess. So let's go give you an update on what's happening. Uh, Yellowstone River at Livingston is just under uh, flood stage at 9.5 feet. In Billings, we're at 13.2. Flood stage is 13.5, also just under. Meanwhile, we still have some problems on the Clark's Fork of the Yellowstone at Edgar and at Belfry. In both cases, we are flooding in that area. Uh, the ob stage at Edgar is at 9.1 feet. Uh, flood stage is 9 feet. And also over at the Belfry, it's at 8.7 feet. Uh, flood stage there is 8.0 feet. We'll have more in your forecast in a few more minutes. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Up next on your Q2 10 o'clock news, uh, more election results. And a little later, our community came together to help homeless pets. An update about leashes and adoptions. Keep it right here. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.